Hi, this is Nell, illustrator slash animator slash generic creative and now 3D printing enthusiast. At the end of 2019, I stopped 20 years of video game hiatus to start playing Death Stranding, and I loved it so much that I decided to make it my theme of the year for 2020. One of the dynamics of the game has you to deliver cargo to the 36 preppers scattered around the Death Stranding universe, and after completing a series of tasks for them, each one gives you a star badge you can place in your uniform pants. Well, for my theme of the year 2020, I decided to gamify my life. I made myself some custom pants, and I am placing one star for each personal project milestone I reach. There are 36 preppers in game, so this means 36 personal projects. This past 2020, I managed to finish 14 of them. Let's see how many can I complete by the end of 2021. Without further ado, welcome to Order 15. <laughs> Want it? A crypto buy it a day keeps the time fall away. In a previous video, I mentioned my first impression with the Elegoo Saturn and briefly showcased some of my crypto buy it through the prints. I decided I wanted to create edible crypto bites next. If you want to create some yourself, here comes my process. Hope you find it useful. The materials you are going to need for this project are 3D printed crypto bites, cardboard, ruler, a pen, a food safe molding making kit, a scale, disposable containers, tooth pickles, clay, a clean brush, and olive oil maybe a fridge. Step 1. 3D Modeling I gathered some close-up screenshots from the game as references, and then proceeded to sculpt the model in ZBrush. If you want to give it a go to 3D Modeling, you can download a free trial of ZBrush from the Pixelogic website, or if money is an issue, you can download Blender instead, which is a free 3D software that also has 3D sculpting tools. Maybe it's not as precise as ZBrush, but the crypto biots are not too complex to make, so it should be fine. If you can't be bothered, you can check the link in the description and download the files I scoped from my Buy Me A Coffee account. They are free, you don't have to buy my coffee. Step 2. Prepare the files for printing and print away. I have a video where I go into more detail in how to do this, feel free to check it out. Then you can proceed to cut the supports off and send your models. Make sure your models are entirely dry and curated before proceeding with the next steps. Let's remember we are creating edibles and the incurate resins for 3D printing are toxic. So you must be absolutely sure there isn't any inside and out of your grid biots. I recommend to wait several days after printing them before proceeding, just to assure. Step 3. Make your container. For this specific step, I made a box out of cardboard, taking into account the measures of the cryptobiots, how tall they are and how much space I want between them. Not too close that they spill into each other, not too far apart that material gets wasted. This was actually something I learned after doing my first mold, which I royally screw up and, as you can see, a lot of material was wasted. Which is ironic because I actually made a small test before to familiarize myself with the process. Say this came up perfect, but when it came to the good mold, well, new problems arise. Anyway, we have our custom box now, so we seal it with tape to avoid spilling. Then we place the crypto bites above, suspended for a tooth pickle that we secure to the edge of the box with bits of clay so it doesn't move. The idea in here is to hold the crypto bites in a position where they stay right at the middle of the mold. If your prints are too heavy, they will sink to the bottom. If they are too light, they will float to the surface, and what we want is for them to be completely covered in silicon all around. Step 4. Prepare the silicon. 
Follow instructions for your molding kit and prepare enough silicon to fill just half of the container with the cryptobiots you just made, in a way that half of their body is covered and half is uncovered, and let it dry. Optionally, you can place the container inside the fridge for a couple of hours so you can get rid of all the bubbles inside your silicon. This process will make the silicon to take longer in becoming solid, so take that into account. The more time you leave your mold to dry, the more solid and less porous it will become. I recommend to drag this time as much as possible, given the silicon you pour on top to make the second half might glue to the first half if you don't wait long enough, and you will end up having to cut the mold in half anyway. It still works, but you will most likely damage the 3D printed cryptobiots while cutting. Step 5. Prepare the silicon for the second part. Now that your first half is dry and ready, take a clean or unused brush, soak it in olive oil, and cover the surface of your mold. This will serve as a protective layer to avoid the second batch of silicon to glue into the first. Make sure not to put too much of it or it will create bubbles. Once the surface is covered, pour the second half of the silicon and same process as before, but this time it is not required for you to wait for longer like with the first half, given the more it sits, the harder it will be to separate the second half from the first. And you, again, might have to cut the mold open anyway, although this time it will be easier than the previous one. Step 6. Unbox your mold and take the cryptobiots out. Congratulations, you got yourself a cryptobiot mold. Now, you can fill it with jello or melted chocolate or if you want an actually healthy recipe, here is one for you. The ingredients you are going to need are a mix of berries, almond milk, lemon, honey, and gelatin. Just start by boiling a couple of berries in a bit of water mixed with honey and lemon. Idea is to get a red syrup to tint your cryotobiots. Once your water is tinted enough, you separate the juice from the berries and then add almond milk until it reaches the cryptobiot shape. Then we pour from 2 to 3 tablespoons of gelatin. This will vary depending on how much liquid you are planning to make jello. Bear in mind the powder might make the shade lighter, so take that into account. Alternatively, you can throw all ingredients in the blender, including the berries you separate before if you want to end up with necrobiotes, cryptobiotes from hell. Once you have your mix, fill each side of the bowl separately and wait for it to get slightly slimy before putting them together to avoid the spillage. Then put them in the freezer for an hour or so. After that, you can take them out and enjoy. And this is it. Hope you find it useful and if you haven't played Death Stranding yet, I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.